Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, we've had some challenges with uh, sharing, I think, screen sharing this um, this um, morning. Um, welcome to our Facebook Live. Hello, Alicia. Hello. I'm excited about this topic. So important. <laughs> I am here today to give you a little bit of an insight into what we do when we look for ingredients for supplements and what you ideally should do when you're looking for safe products, supplements, toys, whatever you do for your dog. And I wanted to give you an example of products that were probably the most difficult to source and that is um, our Feel Good Omega. For those of you who have not been around for long, Feel Good Omega are my Omega-3 supplements. And they were difficult to source, even though they were pretty much a single source ingredients. It took us about two years to get the idea what the world of Omega-3s actually is like. Even though I have a background in nutrition and I'm a veterinarian, it was not that easy to actually decide which one is safe, which one is sustainable, and which one will also provide your dog with the right um, ingredients, the right nutrients. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of what omega-3s are, because many people are mistaking the different kinds of omega-3, 6, and 9, and they may think that they're all equal, but they're not. So, you know, research has established the fact that uh, omega-3s are important for cell repair. Um, they're important for rebuilding the cells. They're important for reducing inflammation. And uh, they've been proven to, to uh, produce shiny coat and healthy coat and uh, healthy joints and mobility and radiant skin and, and healthier aging. Now, when we look at omega-3s, um, research has confirmed, for example, that they're as potent as anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, this is really cool because they're not drugs. You can buy them without a prescription. And at the same time, they don't have the side effects of NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. When you look at the most valuable Omega-3. So there's omega-3, 6, and 9. And then you look on Wikipedia or any other internet source, you'll be able to see the structure and sources and so on. But it, it is not the most important part of today's session or Facebook Live. I would like to take you through the journey of omega-3s and how, no, no matter whether you choose Feel Good Omega or some other sources, how to actually decide uh, what to do and what I've done. And, and the reason why I took this very seriously is I want to provide people and their dogs with the best. I also live with one dog right now, unfortunately, because of my travel, I cannot have more than one. But I also have worked with people. I understand how, how much you love your dogs. Um, you know, almost every day I go to dog park and uh, most people don't know I'm a vet and it's so fun to actually get together with them and talk dogs and see how how they how they love their dogs and how important they are to them so it really makes me feel like I can I can do my little bit um, to help you our community to to make decisions make better decisions and easier decisions and because I don't want to just whine about a certain problem, but I want to offer a solution, that's, that's how my, my life and my work has taken me to eventually formulating products and supplements. And that's why we're a supplement company that is also helping, helping uh, dog lovers how to keep their dogs healthy and, and helping with all sorts of different problems, not just nutrition and supplementation. So um, there are two different kinds of the valuable omega-3s. One of them is called EPA. I'm going to share a screen again. Oops, maybe I'm sharing the wrong screen. Let me just see. <laughs> Here we go. 
So one of them is called EPA. And for those of you who want to, who, who like tongue twisters, it's acosapentaenoic acid. I can't even pronounce it. And the second one is DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. And those are basically long chain omega-3s. Uh, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. Uh, the ones that uh, are shorter are the plant-based ones. And there's a big difference, and there has been quite a bit of discussion and research done about whether plant-based omega-3s are useful and whether they can convert the most valuable EPA and DHA. Um, I talked about the function of omega-3s. Um, they're known to also, you know, beside anti-inflammatory effect and, and uh, cell repair effect and all that, omega-3s are super important to prevent depression. And just recently, I came across a study or some sort of article that actually confirmed that many dogs seem to be depressed uh, when they spend a lot of time alone or uh, they don't have friends that they can interact with. They have pretty much the same maladies and challenges that we face, face with, especially around this time. Um, so omega-3s are important for preventing depression and improving moods and um, and serotonin release and uh, the function of the nervous system. Heart health is also another one. And, uh, you know, I, I take heart conditions to heart, um, no pun intended. Um, I feel that heart conditions can be prevented, not only humans, uh, by nutrition and um, adding the right supplements and making sure the body doesn't deteriorate, but also through. Um, spinal alignment, and you can actually read about heart health in one of my articles on my website. Nevertheless, if you have a dog that belongs to any of these breeds, especially, you're even more, it's even more important for you to pay attention to heart health and pay attention to supplementing good, sufficient doses of omega-3s. Um, the most important question that, well, one of, the, one of the most important and frequent questions that we get from, from you is, well, can we give flaxseed oil? Can we give um, safflower oil? Can we get some other seeds oil, seed oils? And uh, research now has confirmed very sufficiently that plant-based omegas are actually not good. They don't convert to EPA and DHA. They have done research that confirmed that plant-based omegas, for example, improve the coat and skin condition, but they do not have the anti-inflammatory effect. They do not have the cartilage and bone development effect. They do not um, help the immune system to be efficient, and uh, they don't really contribute to any improvement in fetal development. So the only thing, the only thing that you can expect from, let's say, flaxseed oil is improved skin and coat. And it may actually give you an impression that it works as well as EPA and DHA, but it really doesn't. And if you are interested, uh, you can, once again, you know, I, I could be quoting studies and studies and studies, but you can go online and do some, some research on your own because that's probably the best way for you to learn. So um, ALA is the short, short uh, chain fatty acid, omega-3 fatty acid, and it does not convert sufficiently. Uh, they did discover that there is a small amount of conversion or small, small volume of conversion, but it's really insufficient to provide um, good um, effect of the omega-3s in the body. So um, the next one, just to kind of give you a little overview, I'd like to go through the omega-3s and 6s and 9s. Because in the early days, and, and my mistake, I thought that, well, I was taught actually that there has to be a good balance of omega-3s, 6s, and 9s. And some of the supplements that are on the market even say, you know, good, well-balanced 3s, 6s, and 9s. And if you think about it, it, it could give you an impression that it's super important. It's like, you know, you have to have, uh, <laughs> you have to have 3, 6, and 9, not just 3, not just 6, not just 9. But the only ones that are missing and are super important and beneficial and the body cannot make are the threes. The sixes, unfortunately, are the ones that cause inflammation, believe it or not. 
and they're abundant in, um, in uh, meat and eggs and some nuts and seeds. And they could be okay and there are polysaturated fats that are actually beneficial to the body to a certain degree. But you know what happens often that in the food, in um, the oils, they're often rancid. And when they become rancid, they actually become toxic to the body and they become even carcinogenic. So that's a big problem. Um, I will tell you a little bit how to prevent oils to go rancid and what we've done as well on, about field of omega and how we prevented it to go rancid. But um, there's also the nine. So the six sixes are definitely abundant in food. And when they go rancid, they, they're toxic or they become toxic. So it's super important to remember that. One of the six is, is so-called arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is actually part of the inflammatory chain. So unlike the threes, the sixes actually participate in inflammation and they can cause inflammatory processes in the body. And many people do not understand that. So that's super important for you to remember that um, omega sixes are not necessary to supplement. And omega nines, again, they're abundant in food plus the body, human body, and also uh, the canine body can make them on their own. So when you look at omegas, you need to focus only on the threes because they have been deficient. And I'll tell you why there's a difference between then and now. So once again, just to kind of repeat, the omega-6 um, uh, omega actually can cause chronic inflammation, arthritis, and even cancer, especially when they're when they're uh, when they're um, when they're oxy oxidated, when they're when they go through the when they're exposed to oxygen, basically. So again, if you are interested, you can do some research. Uh, but um, I, I hope and trust that this will be probably enough for you to remember. Um, so. Uh, why is there omega-3 deficit? The omega-3 deficit is there because our life has changed and nature has changed. And the way how our dog's bodies work and how they're nourished have changed. Um, I will take advantage to repeat or review this particular slide. Um, every time I think of Africa or any other environment that is undisturbed, we know that the animals graze on the grasses that are fertilized by the manure and the, by the bodies that, that die. And then the herbivores will be eaten by the carnivores and the carnivores eventually die and they feed the soil and there's an under, uninterrupted cycle of nutrients. Unfortunately, with um, intensive agriculture, we, it looks more like this. We fly food, we ship food, we transport food, and the compost never gets back to the soil. And when soils are depleted, um, the plants are depleted, and then uh, the meat is depleted, the herbivores and, and, and our canines would not be getting, even if they were hunting, uh, let's say animals that are eating depleted food, they would not be getting enough omegas plus our dogs are not hunting, plus our dogs are getting kibble that sits on the shelf for six or 12 or more months. And it is completely rancid because it's impossible to prevent the oxygen from going in there. So if there is one big reason beside the fact that the processed food is processed, if there's one big reason not to feed it is that it's full of oxidized anti-inflammatory agents, basically. It's, it's basically one of the primary cause of of free radicals and inflammation and cancer harboring in the body. Uh, it makes all sense. Unfortunately, the convenience of processed food is there. And I, you know, I don't blame you. If you feed kibble, I, I'm not here to lecture you. I'm not here to tell you that you're doing something wrong. I'm here to tell you why I don't feed processed food and why I try to educate and, and tell as many people as possible that kibble is wrong because it sits on the shelves for so long. Even, even if it was made of the best possible ingredients, it's still not ideal and optimal. So um, 
what is the best best source? So now when we kind of agree that dogs very likely, or I'm certain, do need omega threes, and I've seen the difference. I get um, <laughs> almost every day. I get comments on Pax's coat, and people think that I basically do not do anything else than brush him, but I don't. I may spend uh, five minutes every day or every second day, and I just comb him basically. And the coat is nice, and 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 he, you know, I don't clean his ears because they're healthy, and I don't really do much. Um, I bathe him when he rolls in mud once every month, once every two to four weeks, depending where he is. <laughs> Sometimes he rolls in other things than mud, and then I, then I have to hold, then I have to be patient with him. <laughs> anyway, so what is the best source? Uh, and this is this is kind of uh, the start of the journey that I went on. And I I didn't really know where it takes me. Uh, or where we would take me uh, a few years back. I knew one thing that fish is being overfished. And for example, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little um, insight into the chart here. Um, this is, for example, oops, another screen is coming up. This is, for example, the, the sardine, Pacific sardine biomass and how it dropped, right? So if we continue sourcing omega oils, omega threes from fish, the way our mothers did, uh, there's gonna be no fish. Ideally, we should actually all stop eating fish. We should stop or drop the idea that fish is necessary and that fish is healthy because it's not anymore. Unfortunately, um, most of it is done or, or raised in aqu aquaculture on fish farms. You can see once again the the red line here is actually um, the wild caught fish, and the blue line is the aquaculture fish. So you can see those numbers. Like we we basically cannot cannot catch enough fish. Um, people like to eat, so the farms are taking over. But there are so many problems. Um, you're basically eating fish that gets inferior food. The fish becomes what it gets. And we've seen that. I personally, because I come from the west coast of Canada and Alicia too, um, whenever I eat farm salmon, if it happens ever, I feel it just completely different taste and flavor and it doesn't taste like what I'm used to. At the same time, I try not to eat fish maybe now once every three to six months, really one portion, just because you know there's nothing else in the restaurant that I go to or whatever, whatever um, the, the situation is. But, but it's super important to remember that the fish stock declined and that there's a lot of farm fish. And some of the fish comes from areas where the water is super polluted. So, you know, it ends up like this, like the, the, the little fish eats the krill, which is um, the, the, the zooplankton. How do you pronounce it, Alicia? Zoo or zoo? Zooplankton. I would say zooplankton, but zooplankton. don't quote me on that. Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> My ESL disability sometimes rises and I have to ask Alicia for help. So anyway, krill is eaten by small fish and then the small fish is eaten by the bigger fish and so on and so on. So the mercury level rises and most of you know that. The thing that I've noticed um, with um, some fish oils and also dogs that get fish food because you know many dogs are allergic to chicken and, and other proteins and suddenly uh, fish diet comes in place or other special foods. Uh, people often think that fish is healthy, but it's not the case because this is what um, I've discovered. I do a lot of hair testing in dogs. Um, as a result of me finding how useful it is in the practice, I started offering it to dog lovers around the world because it's just as easy as taking a piece of hair and sending it to us and to the lab. Um, and I discovered that dogs that um, eat fish have really high mercury levels. So just to kind of give you an overview of the results here, this is these are the regular healthy minerals right in the gray area. And the normal reference range is here. So this dog has, you know, some high values and some low values like iron and, and cobalt, which is vitamin B12 part. 
core component. But then the toxic elements, that's what we are talking about today, you can see that the mercury is basically way out of the reference range, which is the white one here. And it goes all the way up. And this is what I see often in dogs that eat fish or that are on fish oils. Now, some fish oils may be microfiltered and they may be free of mercury. And I understand that. But it still does not improve or change the fact that fish oil is made of fish that is overfished. And um, we should really try our best to stay away from fish until it replenishes and, and maybe have it as a festive meal um, as opposed to everyday or weekly staple. So um, hairkeytest.com, H-A-R-H-A-I-R-Q, test.com is, uh, is the page, a web page that you can get more information on. So, um, so this is fish. So this was my journey when it came to uh, <laughs> deciding if we, oops, are we still on, Alicia? Um, it's not sharing right now, with, but I can see okay. you. Okay, you can see me, great, perfect. So uh, fish was out. What did we, what did I have next? Well, next one was, um, I'll let you guess, maybe some of you will. <laughs> um, the next one was um, krill. Uh, and krill is very popular um, among dog lovers because, you know, it's low on the food chain and people think, okay, maybe, maybe uh, we, can, we can do with krill. But the problem is that krill is the food source for many, pretty much the whole marine chain, uh, from the small fish uh, to whales. And then those animals also feed the uh, seals and the walruses and the polar bears and all that. So if we overfish krill, we are going to mess up and we already have been messing up the whole food chain. Um, krill is awesome when it comes to oil, but it is not awesome from the point of sustainability. Um, it is super important for you to remember that. There is a really interesting uh, documentary and I didn't tell you um, when I was talking about fish, but Many of you may have seen Seaspiracy. Uh, many of you know what goes on already in the fish industry. Uh, when, when you eat it, when you, when you actually see it, not eat it, when you see it, uh, you, will, you will realize that um, it's time for us to make some changes. So krill levels have decreased uh, dramatically since the 1950s and they endanger fish and whales in other marine life. The next source it's kind of interesting. I was actually hopeful when we started sourcing omega-3s that it would be the best source. Unfortunately, algae is linked, at least based on what we've seen and what we've looked for. It is always, always linked to some sort of GMO patents. Um, if you look online, um, the patents are usually owned by Monsanto's, now Bayer, because Monsanto was, uh, was sold uh, to Bayer. And the other problem is that the extraction of the omega-3s is done by methyl alcohol. <laughs> so, you know, I know that methyl alcohol is toxic and I was kind of looking into it and I was thinking, this is kind of weird. Like, why would I actually want to pour toxic substance on something that I'm going to then give uh, to my dog or eat myself? Of course, it would be vegan, it would be great, it's GMO. Some of you may oppose to it, some of you may not. I'm not really thrilled about it because it's like a little bit of a uh, ticking time bomb. But the way it's processed and also heated is not what I really like. Plus, they actually, some of these supplements are sold in dehydrated form. So again, we have significant degree of oxidization because these oils have to be protected. And if they are actually protected in capsules or in jars that are, that are filled with nitrogen gas, that's all good. But again, the extraction of, uh, of these oils with methanol is um, highly questionable. So for me, it was also out. Now, there's another one, which is phytoplankton. And Again, another promising source that I thought, okay, you know, it's a little stinky when you, when you sniff it or when you, when you, when you taste it, but if, if it's capsulated, it could be good. The only problem is that the funny smell that you smell when you, when you um, 
case, if you ever had phytoplankton oil, it is caused by dimethyl sulfate. And dimethyl sulfate actually is carcinogenic and it's highly poison, poisonous and it's also environmental hazardous. So, you know, a source that you would think, okay, you know, we got it, we got it, it's natural and it's, uh, you know, it, it's abundant. Uh, we could probably source omega-3s from that. Two things again, the dimethyl sulfate. Second, it's often in the powder form, which means that we are dehydrating it and it's much more likely to oxidize. And if it's in the capsule form, again, the dimethyl sulfate is produced. Like every time you open the, the bottle, it, you will smell this funny smell. And once again, you can actually research online what dimethyl sulfate is and, and that it really is a part of the production of phytoplankton omega-3s. So this is all <laughs> not very good news, right? And, and for me, like I almost gave it up. I, you know, I don't really create a supplement that um, I would not feel comfortable giving to my patients, giving to my dog and giving to my family and myself. So calamari was um, the last kind of resource or resort. And I did research and realized that the population, unlike the krill that has been declining since 1950s, the calamari population has really adapted similar to octopus and, and other cephalopods, which is the family or genus, I think, of, the, of these animals. Um, they are increasing in population for one reason. There are fewer fish. We have overfished and um, the calamari is normally eat it or squid or sepia if you want. There's a, there are several different names. They're eaten by fish and they have had a little bit of a heyday since the 1950s, since the population started to decline. Uh, the other thing that is really interesting, they are much more adaptable to change in temperatures of the ocean and the currents and the environment. So they have been kind of the most adaptable species. And the good news is that they, the population has been rising. Now, if there is an over underproduction or if there is a lack of fish, let's say in the ocean, that's a serious problem. But if there is too many of something, it's a problem as well. So for us, sourcing calamari, which is really rich in EPA and DHA was actually the rescue point. And I know some people may say, okay, you know, it's not vegan and I'm vegan and I want vegan oil. Well, sometimes in life, there has to be compromise. And I'm not necessarily saying that everyone has to take uh, squid oil, but I'm just taking you through the journey. I'm taking you through the journey for you to understand how we should approach every food source, every supplement, and look at what the pros and cons are. So if you, let's say, are tempted to say, okay, um, I, I want to find something else. Maybe you live in Australia and we don't have feel good omega in Australia. This is the process that you have to go through, right? No matter what the product is, it's super important. And Alicia is nodding because uh, she's from Australia. And I hope we'll, she'll be able to go and visit her grandma soon and give her some omegas. <laughs> exactly. I'm hopeful. Eventually travel will get back to some sense of normalcy and I can go back for a visit for sure. And take some um, omega. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You know, I've had a personal experience with omega-3s. Uh, in 2013, I went to Calgary um, to visit one of the, one of the wholesalers to see if we can actually make relationship and, and if they can help us with our supplements. And instead of making a deal, I actually got rear-ended. And <laughs> I ended up with a really bad concussion. I had a visual disturbance. I, you know, it took me about five or six years to recover to a certain point of functioning on the visual level. Um, it was difficult to read and all that stuff. But since I started taking, uh, taking um, feel good. I've had such, so much improvement, not only in vision, but also in memory because I'm, you know, I'm not the youngest and definitely have seen some improvement. So the best way for you to actually uh, see the effect is, sorry, I forgot to, to <laughs> turn my phone off. Um, so the best way is to try it yourself and see, you know, I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of dogs with skin problems, neurological problems, uh, rashes, 
um, infections, immune issues, autoimmune disease, all that has um, been a very daily, very much daily part of the practice. And omegas are better than I thought they would be in general. I actually, when I started practicing, I didn't think that they would make as much difference. But now when Pax, let's say, exercises too much and he overdoes it, what I do, I triple dose the, 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 the omega-3s for a day or two, and it works beautifully. If I go for a big hike or if I, if I do some sort of serious exercise, I, I dose myself double or triple dose myself. And again, the difference is there. My goal is that we will not be able, need to, we will not to see doggies like these in practice. This dog has actually mange. And I'm quite certain that if it was nourished well, and if it was given a good doses of omega, that it probably would improve. This is a picture from a long, long time ago, but I discovered it in my computer and I, I thought I would share it. You know, there's no worse thing than seeing dogs that could be better suffering. And this is why I often start chatting incognito, having dog people in the park and talk to them about food. And, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I hope that you'll do that too. Uh, you know, my, my whole dream and my team is working on, on that very much as well, is that we'll see a lot of healthy and happy dogs because seriously, they have a, they have a really important job to do my hope and goal is that once we learn how to keep them healthy, we will make changes in our life. When we make changes in our life, we will have more resources to teach others mental power and energy, and we will save more money on healthcare that then we'll be able to, we will be able to redirect to some other issues, whether it's social issues, environment, uh, dog protection, animal welfare, whatever you care about, right? So I think that healthcare is kind of, and improving healthcare is kind of the key to the to solving other problems. Um, most governments around the world um, spend huge amount of money on healthcare. Uh, in Canada, we have public healthcare and the budget is over 50% of the country's budget, right? And I've been able to reduce the amount of drugs that I use in medicine by about 20, uh, by about 80 or 90%. Very rarely I used to, when I was in clinical practice, I used to use medication because most of these problems were resolvable without drugs. And those who weren't, obviously Western medicine is there. And I'm not necessarily saying that we should forget about Western medicine, but it should not be the first resort. It should be the last resort. And when it comes to, for example, pain control medication, <laughs> you know, when you look at gastric side effects and kidney damage and liver damage and, and all that and, and, and stomach ulcers and intestinal problems, why not use omegas? When it comes to other diseases, you know, the body needs the building blocks. Every time I look at the garden here on the balcony that, that we have here, um, I know that I have to fertilize the, the plants. I know that I have to give them the right nutrients and every gardener knows that. And we in medicine sometimes are too busy to remember that. So it's up to you to remember that. It's up to you to tell others and I hope you will. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Alicia, you may have some questions there. Absolutely. Um, with the community questions, um, I think we're just waiting for some of them to come in. But Susan has asked about human supplement uh, and human dosage. So would you like to maybe um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about the human side of things for Feel Good Omega. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, uh, you know, as, as you may know, or some of you, uh, we started with the human line, with the dog line. And I, um, I always make myself and my family and my friends the guinea pigs. So we test on people to make sure the, the products are safe for animals. But because they're human grade and, and some of them are organic and, um, and all natural, all of them, uh, we, we test them first. So we started taking the supplements and I, I started to see big differences in my health and um, also the people who've taken it. I know that some of you are already taking them. So at the end, I thought, okay, you know, we may as well just uh, launch a human line. Some people don't like to um, spoon feel good omega because it doesn't taste, it tastes like fish oil a little better, but you know, it's not exactly my flavor either. So we started encapsulating them and um, 
we are ready to launch the human line. I actually have the human feel good Omega, which is in capsules here. And um, they're, they're gel caps and a uh, human dose is, is two. And I haven't taken any today, so I will. <laughs> I have to have a little glass of water. Mm. But anyway, um, the same source, um, slightly different concentration. We wanted to we wanted to make sure that it fits in two capsules, so you don't need to you don't need to get four or get a big jar of, of capsules. But pretty much uh, the same source, made in Norway and um, full of EPAs and DHA. With the animal one, if you have the bottle sealed like this, it is uh, a sign that it's protected with uh, nitrogen gas. The nitrogen is pumped in in the production line to protect the oil from going rancid. This is super important and that's why it, gets in, it can sit on the shelf for, for a longer time than after opening. So if you open it, you have to, you have to use it up. Alicia, what is the label um, time frame? Yeah, for the, for the dog line, it is 90 days. Um, and the actual shelf life from the time of manufacturing is two years for our feel-good omega for the dogs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alicia knows these, um, these, um, all these numbers because she's the uh, customer service manager. She's the person behind you guys getting, hopefully, good answers to the questions that you have. And you know we get often feedback that our customer service is um, is great, and I'm really grateful to you, Alicia, because it's your achievement. Alicia has um, is it okay, Alicia, if I disclose where you came from? That he came from the hotel industry. Alicia used to work at the Four Seasons Hotel, but she likes animals more. <laughs> is it safe to say <laughs> on that level? And Alicia also works for the Olympic games when they happen. So once every two years, uh, she leaves us for a month um, and she provides customer service to the VIPs at the Olympic games and outside of the VIPs in our community, which is you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I so often get frustrated about customer service uh, with other companies. So we really, we really put a lot of emphasis on making sure that the get what you need and that you acknowledge that we hear you, that we you know we kind of understand, and not kind of, we understand how you feel. We have dogs, right? Um, anything else you'd like to add, Alicia, before we go into questions? No, just when it comes to we understand how you feel, this was actually a topic of conversation with the team very recently in that um, even though we do the best to take care of our dogs by feeding them a species appropriate natural diet and giving them the amazing supplements, sometimes things go sideways. And when team members are going through something difficult, um, we share as a team and it reminds us of how challenging it is for all of the dog lovers out there going through difficult times or facing confusion with conflicting information. Um, so our team, you know, we love dogs, we love to help you and we're always available for questions on social media and um, online as well through email or by phone. Um, so yeah, we, we love dogs. Send us your photos, send us your questions and it makes our day. <laughs> by the way, if you wanted to see something funny, uh, I, I, I loved looking through the pictures on uh, Father's Day. We Asked, um, asked the community to post pictures of the dads that said no dogs in the house. And it was the best, one of the best posts in the last few weeks because uh, there were so many lovely pictures of the dads that said no dogs in the house and of no dogs in the furniture and no dogs in the bed. And you can only imagine how it ended up. It's, it's, it's really fun. And you know, the, the whole, the whole, um, uh, the whole company or the whole mission is set up in such a way that we, I always wanted to, I, I never liked charging for appointments because, you know, it's, it's about health. And I always believe that um, health is a, and health knowledge is a public domain and that it, we shouldn't really make money on creating health and, or, and medical advice, but how can you do that in veterinary clinics, right? Like they have to charge. So we thought, okay, maybe I start empowering um, the dog lovers around the world. And uh, 
then we had to just solve the the financial side because obviously we have we have you know about 25 team members right now and it's it, it it's it's a lot of work to actually provide the free service so those of you who actually trust our supplements basically also help other dogs beside the fact that we we provide part of our or we we uh, give part of our proceeds to different charities animal charities environmental charities and so on so it's really fun um, to kind of create a system where uh, it seems to work. Um, anyway, what are the questions? If there are any, maybe you guys are all clear and you don't need any <laughs> anything today. Um, some of the questions that have come up, um, Nanette asked, when are you going to launch your human line products? Um, without giving a firm timeline, yeah, um, Nanette, yeah, yeah. we can say that definitely follow us on social media, sign up for our newsletter because we will be letting the community know um, as soon as uh, those are available for sale. Um, but one of the other questions is from can Susan. Can I actually answer, can I answer mm -hmm. the question? Yeah, of course. Go uh, ahead. So, so we will be launching them one by one because uh, in COVID era, we've had some challenges with manufacturing, uh, you know, delays and so on, not quality, but delays. So feel good Omega for humans. Uh, you'll be able to add it to the cart in on the regular website, peterdubias.com, very likely within the next couple of weeks. There will be a special offer as well because we usually do that with a new product just to kind of thank you for your patience and also introduce the new product. Um, and then Greenman and Soul Food will be Greenman will be next, and then Soul Food, and then we'll have another really cool supplement, which is NMN. And you can actually look it up online, and I, you know, I can have a separate uh, Facebook Live on NMN. Um, it stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and it's um, a substance that has been researched by Harvard scientist David Sinclair and other researchers. It is confirmed that it is capable of improving gene repair and uh, reduce inflammation and, uh, and also stimulating the enzymes that are good for anti-aging. As some of you know, we have actually tested, we have been testing NMN in, in dogs because it has not been readily used in dogs. So we now have 30 dogs study. Uh, we are in the middle of the study. I can't really tell you what it is, um, what, the, what the conclusion is. But if we see some improvements, then we'll go into double-blinded study for that. When it comes to humans, there is enough data to know that it is safe for humans and that we are seeing some improvements. I'm actually, I've been on m, &M for the last um, year and a quarter or so. Um, and uh, so we'll be offering it as, a, as part of our human line. Uh, just because, you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I may as well just make it because I, I use it and I want it to be good quality. So that's how we, <laughs> that's how it sometimes happens, right? Um, anyway, um, Alicia, what is the next question? Sure, the next question is on refrigeration. Um, and I'm not sure if we mentioned that earlier in the slideshow, but should the product be refrigerated after opening? The answer is yes. Um, please refrigerate your Feel Good Omega once it's opened, um, as well as gut scents. Um, green mint and soul food can be kept in the cupboard, but gut scents and feel good definitely in the fridge. Um, the next question for Dr. Tobias is about inflammation. Um, Debbie has a question about her dog Camo, um, who developed uh, an allergic reaction possibly to fleas, um, got some hitchhikers while out hiking. He itches like crazy. Does she need to double up on feel good omega to maybe prevent some of this reactivity from the bug bikes he's seeing? Is that something would, that would help, or is there something else that might help um, her dog Camo? You know, there's a really good, um, uh, well, I don't really know whether it's really good, but there's a course <laughs> or, or Facebook Live on uh, inflammation and skin problems and allergies. There are a few different issues that may be going on. Let's look at the fleas. Obviously, we have to get rid of fleas. Uh, if you live in the US, you can use the natural um, flea hex um, that we offer. Uh, if you don't use in, in, if you don't live in the US, it's a little bit of a problem, especially in Canada, we are not allowed to sell it because the lobbies from the drug companies have made it almost impossible to launch natural products like ours. Um, so get rid of fleas, ideally non-chemically. Number two, um, hitchhikers, hoping that you meant like little, little um, hitchhikers, little, how do you call them, uh, thistles or something like that, little, little seats that, that hitchhike on the coat. 
um, obviously there's nothing we can do than comb them out. But most of the time when the skin gets irritated, uh, there may be something wrong with how the skin renews and how the immune system reacts as well. Um, obviously nutrient, um, nutrient dependency of skin issues is very clear and very well known. Um, what do you need to do if you feed kibble, uh, try to feed cooked food or raw food. And then there is another huge part or group of dogs that do not really have any nutritional issues, do not have any real allergies to fleas. They just scratch because they have tight and congested spinal column or certain muscles are tight. So if your dog is older and there's inflammation along the spine or certain muscle groups, um, most of the time dogs chew or scratch and then they secondary cause secondary trauma and the skin gets inflamed and maybe even bacteria harbors. So it's like a chain reaction of inflammation, muscle, spine, possibly some parasites, nutritional deficiency, maybe toxicity, and what you have is basically a current situation. So to give you a very simple step-by-step -step protocol, I'd say get rid of the fleece naturally, number one. Number two, make sure that your dog's spine and muscles are not inflamed and that you see a chiropractor, physical therapist, or someone who will have a good understanding of the spine. Some veterinarians have chiro education and background, some don't. Um, X-rays will not reveal misalignments, just to let you know. Um, inflammation can be detected by hands or just by, by examination. Sometimes dog twitch, dogs twitch their skin or muscles when you touch them. And obviously, uh, omegas will always help if there is skin inflammation, but it may not be the only thing that needs to be done. So nutritionally, you have to really address um, potential deficiencies. The problem is like, if you ask someone, do you know what my dog is missing? Well, not really, because it would be very difficult to test every single nutrient. What you need to do, you need to give the smorgasbord of the basic nutrition, which is variety of meat, bones, and vegetables. And you can use the recipe maker, which you find at recipemaker.peterdevise.com, and it'll give you endless options for recipes that you can make and dosing and all that. If you, what else did I want to say? I, I think that's, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. I'm. I, I feel like I've I've exhausted the uh, opportunity to kind of share with you what I what I would normally do in practice. It's really simple. It's a healing cycle, basically. Detox, provide nutrients, align spine, and see what is left, and repeat. <laughs> and when it comes to it being um, a natural cycle, as you said, can you perhaps expand on how long should people? expect to see results or sorry how long should people um, anticipate before results are seen and I asked this because we did get a question from one of our community members recently that had very recently purchased as in two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago um, the supplements and she was concerned that she hadn't seen a turnaround yet now her dog may have been suffering from various things, including um, some mobility issues and maybe some skin issues, but this is not a magic wand fix that you don't give the supplement and the next day the dog is okay. It can take a while. So can you maybe touch on how much patience people yeah. should, should maybe expect when it comes to seeing the natural turnaround versus when we give a pharmaceutical product that you know changes things in a moment, but doesn't really address the cause of the issue? That's the challenge, right? We give a dose of prednisone and the dog is miraculously better, except um, it comes back in about a week or two and it's much worse and then nothing works. Um, the body and the system needs to rebuild. So it depends how long it's been around. If, you, if your dog has had problems for a long time, months and years, it will probably take months to kind of get them back to comfort. I would not expect changes this fast. Um, in, in a few days or weeks, definitely not. Um, it's also important to make sure that you uh, will work with your veterinarian to ensure that your dog has, doesn't have hormonal issues, hypothyroidism, Cushing's disease, some other issues that may be related to um, deeper systematic changes and, and so, um, or systemic changes, that's what I wanted to say. 
um, yeah, it, it will most likely, if, if there is a chronic disease, it will take weeks, month, uh, but more likely months. Months is, I would say, an average dog would probably take three months to see some changes, positive changes. Be patient. And if your dog is chewing his skin and causing it to be raw, uh, you may need to put a t-shirt on. You may need to put uh, a collar on. Uh, I prefer the inflatable ones as opposed to the, the plastic ones. We actually in that post on Facebook, I saw one dog lover, one dad actually having wearing a collar with his dog because the dog went, <laughs> went to that surgery. That was super cute. <laughs> super <laughs> cute. Anyway, I hope I answered that question. Yes. And the next question is um, from one of our, sorry, I'm just going to pull it up here. Uh, one of our friends on social media, Julie, has written in. I'll give you some background first because it's a re relatively long comment that's been written and then we can hopefully address the questions in it. Um, her dogs are already on green min and soul food and she's about to order some feel good omega. She has an eight year old Chihuahua Terrier Min Pin mix um, and her little guy seems to be having a little bit of cloudiness beginning in his eyes. Um, the vet has also recently advised he's got grade three medical luxating patella. Um, in addition, he seems not as responsive when she asks him to do something. So she's wondering if maybe he's mentally slowing down as well a little bit. Um, so in addition to the benefits that Feel Good Omega could perhaps um, help with some of these issues, what happens when it comes to adding other supplements for support? Um, is sometimes too much not necessarily a good thing? Um, and what else can be safely added to the Fab Four without overdoing it? Um, yeah, so I will, I will answer the eye question first. Sure, um, sure. It's normal for the aging processes to go on. Um, we know that people try and try and try, but we all get eventually older and old. We can slow down the process and the progress uh, when it comes to the cloudiness in the eyes, um, most dogs, not all, some of them, most of them have what we call lens sclerosis, which is basically just changing the structure of the lens because of aging. There is a, and I talk about DNA repair and gene repair. There's a natural repair process in the body, but it slows down when we do not have enough of the right ingredients. And m and should actually boost the ingredient level of of, uh, for the repair. Uh, but right now, omegas are a good start, uh, other nutrients, and obviously a healthy diet. When it comes to NMN, uh, we will probably have more information within the next um, six months or so. Uh, if you decide to use it before, I do think that it is safe, but I do not have uh, long-term data yet. So I have long-term data on me and I'm, I'm doing fine. Um, but, um, and on people, on other people, we have long-term data. On dogs, we still don't have long-term data. Uh, when it comes to other supplements and adding them to this fabulous four, what, what one of our customers called it, the minerals, vitamins, omega oils, and probiotics, see them as nutrients. Like I, I, I go really simple when it comes to addressing nutrition. Uh, I think it makes 80% difference plus if we add these essential fours. And then the others may be therapeutic. We have one of, one of such, such support and supplements is Livertune. And Livertune is a great product for dogs that have elevated liver enzymes. And we add it on because it is necessary to reduce the liver enzyme values to normal. However, it doesn't interfere with the four essential nutrients because ideally if our dogs lived in nature, they would actually get them from the natural food sources. The only problem is that food is depleted and not no longer the same. That's why we add them. So see them as food as opposed to therapeutic supplements. Therefore, theoretically and practically, you can add any other supplements. But I do warn you that I would start with the essentials and then see what is left as opposed to try to give uh, too many products, too many isolates that have, let's say, one ingredient or another. Uh, I think that food is still the most powerful medicine and making it complete is the number one step and then you can start adding up. Um, 
some of you may ask why do you I don't I don't make supplements that are more specific to certain conditions. We will be gradually doing that, but I really want to make sure that they are effective. Like I don't want to be one of those people who will make something just because um, it can make money. I prefer having fewer products and have good results. And you've seen on the reviews and the review page that the results are definitely there. But I, you know, I maybe I'm a little hesitant to. Well, I, I know I'm hesitant and I for, for a reason that I don't want to learn something that I don't know. It's going to be amazing. If it's, not, if it's not great, I don't really want to make it. And I think there is much confusing information about what works and what doesn't. And often, really, some of the supplements are made just to bring income, but they're not really, they're not really formulated with heart, right? Like they're just formulated with the business mind. And that's two different things. Definitely is. And the last um, question is regarding um, how collagen and supplements like that, uh, glucosamine, collagen, um, gluten, anything else that people maybe associate with joint health and um, general health, could mm. that potentially be given with feel good omega? Or would you say if you're giving feel good omega, in theory, that's like enough? Um, I think that they can actually. We will be. We will we'll be. Um, I, I, that's that's on my desk, right? Like we are. I've been working on the mobility support for some time, and we're going to be bringing something that is quite innovative uh, in a way how it's administered and um, what the ingredients will be. But uh, we don't have it yet. And I do agree that uh, you know, for example, perna muscle, glucosamine, and some other ingredients are helpful. And you will be able to, you can actually add them to the omega and the essentials. So do not see the essentials as medicines. They're food mm -hmm. slash medicine, I guess. You know, it's a, it's a food-based food uh, protocol that you're using. It's not a medicine. There's a difference, let's say, if I use milk thistle, which is obviously medicinal, effective medicinal um, ingredient for liver disease or liver enzyme elevation. That's a different ball game. So see some of the supplements as nutritional and some of the supplements as therapeutic. Great. And that's our last question, I think, to round up Facebook Live for today. Um, so thank you to the community for posting some questions. And I see that many of you have commented that you're very excited about the human line launch. Mm -hmm. um, so are we. <laughs> so definitely stay tuned because more information thank will you. be coming very soon. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm also excited, but I'm obviously uh, <laughs> every birth has uh, has uh, anxiety coming along too. So hopefully, it's gonna go well. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a. I like the packaging, and I love I love the I love the whole process how we made it, and and uh, hopefully it's gonna be going well. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care and give your dog a hug for me. Bye, Alicia. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.